Hello, this is Mr. Buffington from Simplify Academy. Today, we are changing fractions into decimals using long division. So we are going to do some long division and some practice with long division. Then we're going to transition into more long division and more practice with that more long division. In other words, we're doing long division. Let's get started. So if you're given a question like this, 25 divided by four, I like to write them as fractions, as you know at this point. You could write it out um, straight, but this is, this is the way you're gonna see it more often. So this means 25 divided by four. The way we would set it up for long division is like this, 25 on the inside of that symbol and four on the outside. And we're gonna go ahead and do some long division. We ask ourselves, how many times does four go into 25? Or in other words, how many groups of four are there inside of 25? And there's six of them. Then we multiply six times four to get 24. We'll subtract and we get one. Now, normally with long division, you'd say six remainder one. But if we're converting this fraction into a decimal, we actually have to take it to the next level, which means putting making 25 into 25.0. Then we just bring it down and we continue the process. How many groups of four are there inside of 10? Well, there's two of them. Two times four is eight and we subtract. And then we add another zero and bring it down. So it's long division basically just continued on. And you just keep going like that until, like with this one, there are five groups of four inside of 20. We end up with a zero at the bottom. Therefore, we are finished with our long division. However, what we need to do now is bring this decimal up for our final answer. And that's it. So instead of having a remainder at the end, we solve all of it. We put in those zeros and we just keep doing long division. And now our answer is 6.25. This is going to take lots of practice. So we have our practice worksheet and I will do it by hand every single question on the practice worksheet in that solution video. So the solution video is actually gonna be much longer than the lesson video and have tons of practice. So definitely use that tool. All right, we are going to keep practicing a little bit together today. What if we have 23 divided by eight? We would set it up like this and say, how many groups of eight inside of 23? Well, two of them, two times eight is 16, and then we subtract to get seven. I'm not finished because it is two remainder seven, but because I'm changing it into a decimal, I'm going to add the point zero, bring that zero down and continue the process. How many groups of eight inside of 70? Well, there's eight, eight times eight is 64. So we subtract and then we bring that down. How many groups of eight inside of 60? Well, there's seven of them, seven times eight is 56. So we subtract and we get a, zero, a four. So we'll add another zero and bring it down. See, this process just can, keeps continuing, all right? There are five groups of eight inside of 40, and then we are finally at the point where we have a zero there. So that's our final answer. We have to bring the decimal straight up, and that gives us our answer of 2.875. Now, I want to point out, there will be questions on the worksheet that go three decimal places, and there's actually a couple that will go four decimal places, okay? So you have to have, I don't have space in this um, video to actually do a four decimal place one, but it's the same exact process, and I will do it on the solution video, okay? But you're just gonna keep going until you get a zero. We're going to do one more that we're asked to write as a decimal, three over five. Here we go, three divided by five. That's the way it's written. Now with this one, it's a little bit different because you look at three and five and you say, how many groups of five are there inside of three? How many groups of five inside of three? Well, there's zero. Right, so we actually have to go over immediately and say how many groups of five inside of 30, and that's six. And it's important where we line up that six. The six does not go over the three, it goes over the zero. 
because when we move that decimal up, that's going to be important. Okay, so now six times five is 30 and we subtract and get zero. But that decimal is going up to there. So you can see an example here. Here is an example where the numerator three is less than the denominator. If the numerator is less than the denominator, you're going to have zero point something. Okay, in our two previous examples, the numerator has always been larger than the denominator. So you have a number on the left of the decimal. But when, when you have a proper fraction like this, where the top number is smaller than the bottom, you get zero point something. So I'm gonna give you a question that's like that, seven over eight. It's gonna be a couple more decimals, but it is definitely going to be zero point something because seven is less than eight. Go ahead and solve that one, pause and practice and try it out. I'll come back and give the full solution in just a second, go. Hey, welcome back. So here is this question set up and we're going to start by saying we know there are no groups of eight inside of seven. Eight is greater than seven, so we have to add that zero. And we pretend that that's 70. How many groups of eight inside of 70? Well, there's eight of them. Eight times eight is 64 and we'll subtract and get six. Then we just keep adding zeros and bringing them down. How many groups of eight inside of 60? Well, there's seven of them. Seven times eight is 56. These numbers look familiar, huh? We subtract and get a four, add a zero over here, bring it down. How many groups of eight inside of 40? Well, there's five of them. And then we end up with eight, seven, five. As our answer, we've got a zero at the bottom, so we know that we can finish. Now that decimal needs to come straight up, so our final answer is 0 0.875. Now, incorporating what we learned from our previous lessons, we could ask, if you scored seven out of eight on a quiz, what is your grade as a percent? Now we're taking things to the next level, right? because we've got that decimal and we can convert it into a percent. So at this point, we could take a fraction and convert it into a decimal and then from a decimal into a percent. So that's definitely something moving forward that you can be able to do now that you have both of these skills. So we would multiply it times 100 or shift the decimal two places over and we would get 87.5%. If you scored seven out of eight on a quiz, you'd have 87.5%. Not bad. All right, couple things to remember. You need to remember the steps for long division. They are important and they will come up again. Bigger numbers are just a distraction. Just keep following the steps and you will be absolutely fine. If you get lots of decimals, lots of numbers after the decimal, that's fine. In the worksheet and quiz, you will never have more than four decimal places. So keep that in mind. If you do get more than that, then there's a mistake somewhere along the line. Good luck on the worksheet. Make sure to use that and check out the video to show all of the steps for solving the questions. Have a wonderful day.